you've become the world's biggest racing car manufacturer, then you've got an Australian company involved, then on top of all that, you've got to do another thing that very few drivers or riders, Giacomo Agostini couldn't make it work, of running a team. How did you as a driver, and a driver who was still driving, get on with employing, picking who you wanted to drive for you, and uh, managing them properly? Well, real, basically, it was um, a matter of the team of people that you had behind you. And, How uh, big was your team? Hmm? How big was your Formula One team? Uh, well, actually what we had was a factory building motor cars, trying to make some money so we could go motor racing. And um, we probably had uh, 20, 25 people building cars. But at the do same you, time, they built our Formula One cars as well. Do you know that the V8 teams have more than that now, running a V8 team? <laughs> yeah, they are incredible, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Those tin tops. So, times have changed, haven't they? But uh, I tell you what, it was really basic of a team of people I had behind me that got me there. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we had mainly Australian and New Zealand mechanics, and we had uh, Ron Thornick as a chief engineer and a chief designer. And it must have been very influential, Ron Thornick. Because if you look through, um, Brabham's and then uh, Ralph's later, the number of current or recent Formula One drivers that drove Toronac designed cars and built cars was just astonishing. Mm. They were the thing to have, weren't they? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Why? Why were they so good? Because they were fairly simple, weren't they? Well, um, Australia and New Zealand people in those days when we went over early on, um, it was you know, after the war, there wasn't too many things you could go and buy over the counter uh, that we had to make them and make do. And the Australian and New Zealand people were extremely good at that. And uh, it would be the race meeting, for instance, if something goes wrong with you, just have it fixed in no time. Yeah. It also was suggested to me, more so on the motorcycle <laughs> side than the car side, but that. Um, if you'd made the commitment to go from Australia to England stroke Europe, it was so enormous, you didn't go there lightheartedly. you went there to make it work, you were going to make it happen. Do you think it was a greater commitment of Aussies by the time they got to Europe? Yeah, well, we had to be really dedicated to start with, yeah. to, uh, to really want to do it. Yeah. And, you know, unfortunately, well, fortunately, I was one of those people that really wanted to do it. <laughs> Things half the size of the yeah. cars around there. So, uh, to, to air last year, something about the peop nasty people in motorsport, something you don't outlive the bastards. <laughs> 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 no, no, no. What I said was that um, uh, my aim now was to go to the Formula One Series and to win the Formula One Series. They're going to outlive the bastards. <laughs> <laughs> and some junior Brabham's immediately below you, Geoffrey David, um, now both won them all. Remarkable. And you've got a grandson coming along too. Yes, that's the, uh, that's Geoffrey's boy. Matthew. Yeah, Matthew. And uh, he started racing when he was seven. And uh, he drove go karts. And uh, he's now 15, he's finished with go karts. But with his go karts career, he had uh, three, uh, four state championships to his name. Uh, well, he's not good, no, it's not too bad. No. And uh, he's had a couple of runs in the form of Ford now. And he's got a Formula Ford deal for next year. He's going to be running in the championship, Formula Ford championship. And he's shown a pretty good promise. So um, just, I think we'll hear a lot more about Matthew. And uh, he's got the Brabham journey, and he's going to get there, I'm sure. Good stuff. Well, he's got Cam support this year, hasn't he, in one of their driver programs. But the good news is, Geoffrey told me the other day, and he said, Dad says he wants to pay the entire bill for the Formula Ford program. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, actually, yeah, he's got a good drive for the next year, really. Uh, and uh, 
We're all looking forward to uh, this thing here again, and of course he's got a father that uh, is pretty keen, and his father's uh, sort of a team manager now, and um, yeah, yeah. yeah, and um, yeah, we're all looking forward to uh, winning the championship. There was a lot of rivalry between you and Sterling, Sir Sterling, to give him his correct title now. And you were actually the first motor racing knight, I think. Is that right? I think you were the first driver to be knighted. Yes, yeah, you know, I was the first one. And, uh, and of course, um, people like uh, Moss and Stewart and them were, weren't too happy about that. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, they eventually got there themselves. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, Sterling. I won that race. <laughs> <laughs> and quite appropriately. I'll, I'll tell you another thing that Sterling wasn't too happy about. At Warwick Farm there was a wonderful guy, Maltese, used to patrol the crossing to the pit, pit area. And if you didn't have the right pass, you were dead. I can remember trying to get across there one day and I didn't have a vehicle pass from a motor scooter and he wouldn't let the scooter across. I had a pass for me. I had parked a scooter and walked. So Sterling was turned up for the international meeting one year and the Maltese guy said, where's your pass? And he says, I'm sorry, I've left it at the motel. I've forgotten it. And the bloke says, you can't get across. And he says, but I'm competing. And he said, I don't care. You can't get across. And he said, but I'm in the main race. He said, it doesn't matter. You've got to have a pass, otherwise you can't get over. And he said, I've come from England to compete here, my name's Sterling Moss. He said, I don't care if you're bloody Jack Brabham. If you haven't got a pass, you can't get it caught. <laughs> Talking about that, actually, it was funny, really, in England, uh, when the Mini first came out, we all remember the Mini, what a fantastic little car that was. It was the first really little car that we really handled, and you could have some fun with, wasn't it, really? Yeah. And uh, we were up at, um, it was John Cooper up at, uh, at BMC, yeah. up in Birmingham. And uh, E.G. Gangus, the chap who designed it, yeah. uh, was there. And, uh, we had lunch with him. And he just finished making uh, the first 1,000cc mini engine. Yeah. Right? So he got the idea then, and he said, well, how about I land you with this motor car with a 1,000cc engine? And you'd let me know how you get on with it. I thought, oh, that's fantastic, yeah. So anyway, I went back down to London with it and uh, um, I had to go up to a BRDC meeting one night up in London. And uh, after the meeting, I had to go to Crystal Palace, which was quite a long way up. And I wasn't too sure of the way to get there. But anyway, it was late at night, about 11 o'clock and uh, I roared off of this thing and went over Westminster Bridge and round the roundabouts and even a sudden look in the rear vision mirror and there was a policeman on a motorbike chasing me with sparks coming off his spark foot and footrest. <laughs> <laughs> so I just pulled him to the side of that but I couldn't race him. Anyway, he put the bike uh, right in front of the car so as I couldn't move and he put the props down and down and he strolled back looked in the window and he says, who do you think you are, Sterling Moss? <laughs> <laughs> so I said, no, but I enjoy beating him. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that went out of his head, really. So he said, he said to me, let me have a look at your license. So I showed him the license. He says, God, he says, you've made my day. He says, that's fantastic, I can't believe it. He says, what's your hurry? Where are you going? I said, I've got to get to the Crystal Palace. I'm not too sure of the way. They said, follow me. And he jumped his motorbike and couldn't be back with him.